Hi guys, so um, I thought I'd do something a little bit different than just flying my wings and producing videos, which I really enjoy doing. Um, started flying wings maybe in yeah March last year. Uh, started with my AR wing, been a fantastic plane. Um, then uh, decided that uh, I wanted to progress into a cruiser, so I then moved up to um, the, the Dart XR, which has just been, well, it's just been an amazing plane and I absolutely love it. Um, but it is uh, pretty big, of course, and uh, I use that mainly for cruising um, and some reasonably long range stuff. I've been about 12, 13 kilometers out with it, no problem. Uh, and then I saw the Dart 250G, so I thought, you know, this looks like a really cool little plane. I'd never really seen anything like this before, so uh, I decided to build one of these. So what I thought I'd do this time is, rather than just flying the thing and doing the Maiden, talk a little bit about the mods that I'm going to do to this plane because I've actually realised that in this hobby I actually enjoy the building part of it just as much as the flying part of it. Um, I mean, enjoy the whole thing, but the building part of it is something I really, really enjoy. So I thought I'd just take you through some of the things I've done to this plane or I'm going to do to this plane as like the first part of the video and then maybe do a second video on looking at it again once everything's installed that I want to install in it um, and then maybe do a Maiden video and an INAF tuning video and make like a little mini series on the top on the dark 250g from a from a novice's perspective like me um someone that doesn't you know have much experience in flying wings and has come from quads so uh, that's what i'm going to do so we'll start off by having a look at the plane and then um i'll take you through the components that i'm going to use and then you know, we'll take it pretty much from there so uh, if we start off with the plane so i actually started off with the uh, the kit i've actually got myself a, a list here of all the items that i've got so i started off with the kit Okay, so let's just run through the, uh, the components that I've, uh, I've decided to use for the plane. So starting with the, uh, the motor, um, I've gone for the Brother Hobby Tornado T1. Um, this is a, a 1407 motor and runs at 2800 kV. There are other variants, but I decided to go for 2800 kV um, based upon the fact I'm going to be running this thing on 4S. Um, so yeah, that's the motor. I've used these really successfully, these, uh, these Brother Hobby motors. Um, in my quads and they've been fantastic it feels really nice but i've got to say it's this it's the smallest motor i've ever actually uh owned for any quad or plane so yeah it's pretty tiny um in the back of the fuselage here one of the things that the dart xl has um it comes with this like this 3m sticker um as part of the, you know, the the fuselage hatch cover so um a really good friend of mine who's an engineer um also a quad pilot um he's um actually um, rebuilt the design of that and I've had that cut in one mil carbon so I'm probably going to want to go to get access to this cover so um, let's push those ESC wires in there so what I'm going to do I'm going to I'm going to 3d print a little um, bracket that goes underneath the uh, the hatch cover and then I'm going to mount that onto the back of the plane and then at the bottom here I'll probably put like a uh, embed in the fuselage uh, a, a small uh, plastic standoff and a small plastic um, M3 thumb screw so I can unscrew it and then lift the, uh, the hatch cover off so that's carbon so I'm already adding weight this is uh, this is not going to be a, a Dart 250G I'll be surprised if it's even a Dart 300G by the time I finish but you know I'm not bothered about the, uh, the weight I've already registered the plane as you can see or registered myself uh, I just want a plane for proximity flying, um, flying gaps, and trying to fly a plane like a fly quad through small gaps. Okay, so the main electronic component, so starting with, in the middle here, the uh, the Matek um, F411 WSE, again, a really tiny flight controller, perfect for this little plane. Um, it's not gonna have lots of extra stuff that's gonna need lots of UARTs. Um, and I'm driving from that um, a Spedix GS35 amp ESC, yeah, it's a quad ESC, BL Heli 32, something I'm very familiar with being a quad pilot and should be more than adequate for this plane. Um, I did actually run this ESC in my AR wing on 5S and even on 6S once and it, it stood up to it really well. Um, this is a, an AKK uh, FX3 VTX. It's the small 20 by 20 form factor. Uh, I think it goes up to 600 milliwatts. So that's going to mount in the back of the plane. I'm actually going to uh, mount it onto this carbon fiber plate that I've made. So I'm going to bond this into the fuselage of the plane and then I'm going to just use M3 screws into these standoffs that's connected to the carbon fiber to hold that and kind of lift it up. And then that's going to allow me to pass the ESC cable um, through 
like this, so that mounted in the back of the fuselage will have the VTX and then the ESC towards the rear of the plane with short cables connecting it to the motor. So that'll keep that nice and neat. Um, and this cable for the uh, VTX will also run, it's the wrong way round, through underneath, through there, and mount, put that on there like that, and that will mount nicely and neatly in the back of the plane. Okay, uh, in terms of the, uh, the receiver, uh, I run a t I'm using a Tyrannus X9D. I'm a Crossfire user, so I've gone for the Crossfire Nano. Um, this thing only weighs half a gram, so I guess it would actually be perfect for a Dart 250G if you wanted to be 250 grams or below. Um, in terms of the GPS, um, I'm going to be running the Bitan uh, BN180 GPS. It's really quite small. I think the uh, this weighs 4.9 grams, um, so that's a that's reasonably light. So that's going to be quite good to use again in this plane. And I've 3D printed this little um, mount for it, so that's going to sit really nicely inside there. And then we're going to bond this mount to this front crossbar on the plane like this might make it removable with some plastic screws so that I can actually get access to it um, and then uh, obviously the cover will sit over the top and the uh, the GPS signal will easily go through this foam um, on the AR wing the GPS is actually mounted well inside the fuselage with no problems at all the only consideration I have are these two magnets and whether or not that's going to affect the GPS but we'll find out as we progress and if we have to move it we can we can move it somewhere else but I like the idea of it being hidden under the cover. Um, talking about the, the cover itself um, I'm going to cut a hole in the cover and um, I 3D printed this this knacker duct because um, I need some cooling in there the front of the, the 250G is kind of completely sealed um, when the camera goes in there even that hole inside there where the ribbon cable for the camera passing through um, it's going to be kind of sealed by the camera and the little cover there so um, I'm going to mount this um, this little knacker duct that I've made I'm going to cut a hole in the top of the cover and mount that knacker duct on there to ram air down into the fuselage and that'll push the air through the fuselage and of course out of the ducts that are cut into the carbon fiber uh, um, grid on the back of the plane and the reason why I'm so um, hell-bent on cooling is because the camera that I'm going to use is the Cadix Tarsier V2. Um, this apparently will record at 4K, um, 2.7, also 1080p as well. Um, and I've actually discovered that this actually fits beautifully in the front of the, uh, the plane. If you use um, one of these Runcam uh, Micro Eagle mounts, I don't use these mounts on my quads, uh, you should have two tabs, so I've cut one of the tabs off. And that means that that fits perfectly, absolutely perfectly, on the Tarsier. Okay, and then that mount fits absolutely perfectly, and I mean perfectly, in the front of the fuselage like that. And then the little cover that goes on the top of it is going to fit perfectly over the top, and the Tarsier is going to fit really neatly in the front of the fuselage. So that's what I'm going to do with the cam. Um, now, the only thing about this is that because this ribbon cable passes through, just let me put this cover back on so that the lens doesn't get scratched, um, is it gets bloody hot. Um, so what I've done is I've taken um, an AKK heatsink and I've bonded that onto the metal plate, which is the heatsink for the Tarsier, with some um, high heat paste, and that's really solid. That's not going anywhere. And then I've 3D printed this mount, which has got like this this click affair, so I can pull the, um, the Tarsier um, DVR board back and then lift it out slightly so I can actually get to, which is on the other side, um, the SD card. So I'm gonna bond this plate into the bottom of the plane and then basically I can then drop the Tarsier into that, push that forward, push that forward, Trapped a cable, it's quite difficult to use. You push that forward like that, and that locks in place. Pull it back, and it'll lift off just to give me just enough access to the SD card. Then drop it down and push it back in place, and that should be held nice and firmly. Um, I'm also going to put a 3D printed this little battery mount. So, the battery that I'm using is this uh, 
Turnergy Nanotech 850mar 4S. Um, that comes in in terms of weight at 94 grams. So, mm, yeah, it's definitely going to be a 300G. Um, so, um, I'm going to mount that on this little 3D printed plate because there's no, no other way to kind of fasten um, your LiPo into the fuselage unless you start cutting holes in the bottom of it. And my OCD is not going to allow that to happen. So, I'm going to mount that on there and I'm going to use. Um, Move that out of the way. I'm going to use this little run cam strap and that's going to um, be mounted onto the plate like that. I'll, I'll probably use um, some anti-slip matting on here to stop it from sliding around and I've cut some grooves in the bottom of the plate, one for the strap but also so that the actual cable that mounts, that runs through to the tarsier at the front of the plane um, can be mounted underneath this plate so it won't get damaged or pulled or stretched. I left a little bit of slack of course so I can remove the tarsier but that's all going to be at the front so the, the lipo is going to sit on top of that and the cable is going to be underneath so again it will be all nice and neat and there'll be no wires showing and no chance of a snag and disconnecting the camera which wouldn't be good fun. So in terms of the, uh, the actual um, bottom of the plane itself on the fuselage, what I've done here, let me move these components out of the way, we don't need those anymore, um, is I've mounted um, the crossfire antenna underneath the, the plane like this and um, I'm going to mount it this way. I know that everyone says you need to mount your antenna vertically but this is a proximity plane, it's not going to be going very far and it should be absolutely fine. So when I've, I'm going to bond that in there with some E6000 so the cable goes in there and then I'm going to bond this little carbon plate over the bottom there so it's all nice and neat. And I'll probably finish it off with a bit of this clear uh, Gorilla Glue, which, uh, Gorilla Glue? Gorilla Tape, which I use on the leading edge of most of my wings, um, like the AR wing, um, and uh, I might put some on the bottom of the fuselage on here. So that's what I'm going to do um, with the mounting the antenna. Oh, uh, in terms of the actual um, servos, um, I've actually decided to use some spur servos that came with the Dart XL, the ZOHD, uh, they are Metal Gear Digital. Um, I had a problem with these when I was uh, setting up the, uh, actually mounted the Crossfire antenna on the end of the wing on the Dart XL and uh, it, it was causing these servos to jitter, so I replaced them with some, some alternative Metal Gear servos which are much higher quality, more expensive, but I thought this will be, these will be fine for the Dart 250G. They are a little bit big, but they should be fine. Uh, I'm not going for 250 grams anyway, so I don't care. Um, I am pushing 4S, so it should have plenty of punch. So um, hopefully these won't jitter with the, um, the electronics for the, uh, the Crossfire being inside the fuselage this time, but we, uh, we certainly will see how that pans out. Um, oh, I also uh, made a 3D printed, um, well, I didn't, a friend of mine designed this 3D printed cover Anybody wants one of these LOHD 3D printed covers, you can print it at like one mil, two mil, and uh, use it to replace the, uh, you know, the, the the 3M sticker. It's got a ZOHD design on it as vents rather than the, uh, the kind of traditional design. Um, so yeah, uh, I'll put uh, a link. To, I'll put that up on Thingiverse and put a link in the description of the video, as I will put all the other items in a list with the the links to where I actually purchased everything from. Okay, in terms of propellers, um, pushing 4S on this motor. I had some of these for my first ever quad that I built. These are Gemfam uh, quad um, props by Blades um, and they're 5040s, so 5x4 props. I'm going to try those. Um, I've also got some of these. Um, these are new Gemfam, um, these are for planes. Um, I've got two variants of these props. I've got the 4.75x4.75 um, the to try and I've also gone for some um, some five by fives in the same design, but uh, yeah, I'm going to try all three of those props with this uh, this combination of uh, powertrain that I've got and see what uh, kind of um, responsiveness we get. You know, we're probably just going to crash and burn on the maiden, um, but uh, as I've got experience of that happening, um, it's not going to be such a shock. So uh, yeah, we've got those to try. I think that's pretty much uh, it. Um, oh, the only other thing is this. Um, the JHE-20B uh, drone finder. So I've actually mounted this um, just at the front of the fuselage here, uh, on the top of the fuselage. So this is a buzzer, uh, it's about 90 decibels, it's got an LED light that flashes. So if you get a, an ejection, so if your LiPo is ejected from the plane, 
then this thing will beep for a long time. Now with this being such a small plane, you know, it's only going to take some bushes or some long grass and you're actually going to lose um, that plane quite easily. So um, yeah, having that buzzer is going to be really useful. Of course, I've got GPS on the, on, on the plane uh, anyway uh, to help me find it in case of those kind of situations and that saved my skin plenty of times. So yeah, that's all the parts. Uh, so part two of the video will be having installed all of that and, and installed um, iNav onto the flight controller and set it all up and configured it. We'll have a look at what the finished article looks like and then maybe we'll do a third video where we take it out in the field and, uh, and, and do a, a maiden flight and see how it flies and what the experience is like and how this Cadix Tarsier works uh, and maybe do a bit of tuning. So uh, that's it for now guys. I maybe uh, look forward to uh, seeing you on the next one. Okay, take it easy.